Good morning, you join me for another mobilisation video. Today we're going to be tackling the elbow. We'll start off with our passive physiological movements. So we're moving on to our passive physiologicals for flexion and extension. When we consider this, we mainly look at it being the humero ulna joint. However, we do need to consider that we also have an articulation between the humerus and the radius. Um, obviously, this end with, where the radius articulates is a ball and socket, but it only has two uh, planes of movement, whereas the humero ulna is our hinge joint, which is really what's controlling that motion of flexion extension being available. When we're looking at this at the, at the joint, we're looking at the range that's available for our mobilization, you do need to consider it as being, for instance, if we're going from flexion, then clearly we're looking at it from an extended position up into flexion, and then we can perform our mobilizations, versus extension coming from flexion down into extension. And we need to change our setup to suit the patient. It really depends upon how much range they've got and um, the types of restriction that they have and where that restriction is as to whether you add any supination, mid or pronation because when we change the position of the um, radius it's obviously altering what's happening at the um, humeroradial joint but doesn't change what's happening at the humeroulna joint. So if we just take a, a standard flexion um, passive physiological if we're looking at testing our movement, then obviously as we're coming up, we'd be asking the patient for whether they have any restriction on range, whether it feels stiff at all, and also if they have any pain. At any point that they felt pain, we'd be asking them to highlight it to us. Let's just say, for instance, the patient has pain at this range here. So if that was the onset of pain just there, I just need to back off ever so slightly away from the pain, and then I can start my mobilization. So for instance, this would be my grade one, my slow and controlled. If I was doing a grade two for the same point, I'd be coming up towards that point, making it a larger motion. It's really important when you're doing these techniques as well to talk to your patient and try and keep them nice and relaxed so that as you're doing the mobilization, they relax with you and allow you to do the movement. Coming into grade three, so if we, were, if we were coming into flexion, and let's just say they either had resistance quite early, which would be kind of somewhere around here, or on this real patient here, their resistance starts just here. So we would need to come into resistance, find pain, let's just say pain was there, then we can back away from the pain, and then we can do our grade three, coming into and partly out of resistance. Or if it was a grade four, We'd be finding that painful point, backing off slightly, and then performing our grade four. With our grade four, obviously, we're trying to maintain being in resistance to have a greater um, effect on the tissue because there's a greater stretch being performed. So you've got to maintain resistance. If we're doing any of those with any level of um, pronation, then it's quite simply just at the other end, at the wrist end, we just alter the positioning and then perform it exactly the same as we did before. Looking at extension, we're going to be moving our handling so that we're going to come underneath and supporting the humerus from underneath here. And then again, staying distal on the radius and ulna. Again, we're going to be testing our range, trying to find where pain is. Let's just say pain was there. Then I could be doing my grade one, nice and slow and controlled. Grade two, just being larger. Notice the handling, I'm trying to maximize the amount of area of their uh, limb being held by my hand. So don't kind of be tempted to make your handling seem really, really light. Some, some therapists I've seen do this as if it looks pretty good and it doesn't. Just get a really good firm hold so that they feel stabilized. Coming into a grade three, so for instance, some people might have a, a, a resistance um, occurring towards you know, this sort of range here, around 20, 30 degrees. If that was the case and you felt the resistance, then obviously this would be where your grade three might be happening. Clearly with this 
patient. We don't have we don't have resistance really until the very end of range, kind of just coming into this range here. So for the purposes of demonstration, I will show it, but clearly this is a normal range that I don't need to try to increase. We have to remember we've got bone on bone contact at the end of range where the electronin process drops into the electronin fossa. Obviously if your patient does have a restriction, especially in extension, you do need to be considering whether there is anything wrong with the electronin, whether we have any um, particles of bone that perhaps have been um, fractured or come off and that's getting in the way in the fossa and so it might be more appropriate to ensure, especially if you're having no real progress, to look at getting them scanned. Moving on to the superior and technically the inferior radioulnar joint, looking at our pronation and supination. There's quite a few ways that you can do the handling for this one. So really it goes a lot with what the therapist feels most comfortable with and also I suppose what works best for the patient that doesn't cause them any pain or discomfort. So one way to do it is to try and use your hands at the distal end holding a round radius and ulna. So we are just doing it like this so that we line up and create that shape and then we're going to move that shape with our arms and that fits around the radius and ulna this way. So for instance if I was coming into supination here I can be testing the range feeling for where any pain or resistance comes on and then I can start my mobilization. Now the mobilization looks a lot larger with the movement at my elbow that's just the very fact that I've got a long lever running from my hand to my elbow so the actual movement at the joint is really rather small. So if you look at the amount of movement in my elbow versus the movement in my hand you can see it's a lot smaller. So a grade 2 for instance, grade 3, and grade 4. If it was pronation, we're just going to go around in the opposite direction. So bring our arms round into pronation, find that point of pain or resistance, and perform your mobilization. Okay. So with our pronation and supination, we can alter our handling so that we're using our thumb all the way down into our metacarpal. So then the metacarpal and the thumb come across over the radius here. The other hand is supporting the ulna on the medial side. So we can then pull the forearm round into supination. So I'm gripping just like that onto the radius and using the radius as the lever into supination. My other hand is just coming with purely because the soft tissue is moving. So obviously that ulna is not moving, I'm just coming with the soft tissue. So I'm not gripping too hard on this side. Into pronation, similar thing, and we're just going to support the ulna, holding onto the radius, and then taking it round into pronation. An alternative that I have seen people use is actually trying to, to use just a single hand. So then one hand comes onto the elbow and you can support and you can always feel what's happening at the radius. And then you just use your hand to bring the arm round into, for instance, pronation. Or if we swap hands, then we can bring the hand into, or the arm into supination. There we go. That's the supination, pronation, flexion and extension completed.